fans, you've heard me talking about it pre-show for a while. If you haven't done it, please check out teachhoops.com slash 816 basketball. Steve Collins has incredible, incredible content that you really don't want to miss if you're a basketball coach and wanting to grow. Teachhoops.com slash 816 basketball. And if you haven't listened to the Competitive Mindset Podcast with Billy Kegler, a former guest on the Greatest Games Podcast, you're missing out. Listen to that show where guests share how they differentiate themselves and achieve high levels of performance through the lens of motivation, competitiveness, and mindset. It's the Competitive Mindset Podcast. Follow along on social media at Competitive Pod. Hello and welcome to the Greatest Games Podcast brought to you by 816 Basketball. I'm one of your hosts, Brian Rosefield, and I'm joined by my co-host, Chris de Blasio. Thank you, Brian. Pleasure to be here always on the Greatest Games Podcast. A chance for us to catch up with basketball coaches from around the country and have them tell us about their greatest game. As always, a comedian of time as a head coach, an assistant coach, a JV coach, a college coach, a high school coach, just whatever game they consider to be their greatest. Or even a high school athletic director, and that is who we have today, Chris de Blasio. He is also a former basketball coach. He's been around basketball for a long time, and he's going to offer some of his perspective. Got some good, fun questions for him as an administrator on the athletic side about what he's looking for in coaches, and maybe well, we'll get to that in a little bit. But he is the athletic director at Northwestern High School in Rock Hill, also affectionately known as Rock Thrill. Jimmy Duncan, welcome to the Greatest Games Podcast. Thank you guys for having me. I'm excited to be here. We are excited to have you. And um, Brian and I'm sorry, Brian insists that we have to interview South Carolina athletic directors or whatever. It's yeah. part of the. But what's wrong with that? <laughs> yeah, maybe I had an inside track. I don't. I don't know. But I, I'm, I'm definitely excited to be here with you guys. Well, Coach Duncan, why don't you take us a little bit through uh, your journey in coaching and then how you got it to be where you are there as the athletic director at Northwestern High School? Yeah, Chris. Um, so when I was in college at USC, I started uh, working at Brooklyn Casey High School uh, with Coach Bachman. Uh So I started off there, very strong coach, and was able to learn a lot from him. Um, I think we had ended up with a pretty good staff also on that uh, assistant coaching staff there was Daryl Jarvis, who's at Dreer High School currently, uh, state championship coach, incredible guy, incredible coach. Uh, and then I went to Winthrop. I was a student manager there for a year under Randy Pill. Um, won a Big South tournament that year. And then I moved on after I got my degree to Great Falls, South Carolina, where I worked under John Smith, another legendary coach. Um, greatest coach in high school basketball as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then I got to take over for him after he retired. And I was there for – coached there for four seasons until I took over as athletic director at Northwestern High School last year. Well, you got to work under some great coaches there. You mentioned them, Ricky Balknight, Randy Peel, and Coach Smith. Uh, that was a pretty good staff. I'm going to put Brian's JV staff up against that. Because <laughs> we had uh, myself, who I fancy myself a decent coach, and we had Coach George Glimp. They're pretty good. So, they're pretty good. Uh, and not bad there. Not bad at all. <laughs> we were, as as we mentioned in episode one hundred with with Coach Glimp, we were laughing about that. It was it was a robust JV staff to to say the least. And uh, <laughs> and we had Coach Letsum. I forgot about Takuma Letsum, our buddy. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Brian had three volunteer assistants on a JV team. Who who's had that in the history of mankind? <laughs> uh, Brian finds a way to work it out. I'm sure. Yeah, I just feel like I, I know how to hire well, right? I mean, that's 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 just the that's the, that's the truth, you know. Uh, and and you mentioned Daryl Jarvis too, episode thirty nine of the Greatest Games podcast over at Dreer High School right now. Does a, like you said, is a state championship coach does a great job. So you've been you've been around some of the greats for sure. Talk about Jimmy. Talk about that. Talk about some things you may have learned fr from those different people and being around those guys and kind of some things you took from them as mentors. Yeah, so, you know, starting off uh, as a brand new coach, um, you know, first, I'm still in college at the time, uh, you know, uh, Coach Jarvis kind of took me underneath his wing, so did Coach Balknight. Um, you know, Coach Balknight was trying to show me the finer points of trying to uh, schedule practices, what that looked like, how to um, practice plans, how to attack games. I mean, everything brand new guy. Uh, and Daryl Jarvis kind of took me on how to handle the kids. 
uh, discipline wise, how to talk to them, how to get them to respond to you in a positive way. And, you know, that was a steep learning curve for me at, you know, 19 and 20 years old, um, considering I was just, you know, one to two years older than these guys and trying to act like I was, you know, 25, 26. Um, and then when I got to you know, college level, I was really just trying to learn the game as far as X's and O's. Um, you know, I've watched thousands of hours of film. Uh, you know, as you guys know, uh, you, you know, you get access to a, a library that's second to none uh, when you're a student manager like that. And then when I went to John Smith, that's like getting a master's or PhD in coaching. Uh, you know, I mean, when you win that much and you're that successful over that long period of time, I mean, he did it as a, as a girls coach, boys coach. I mean, at one point, the man was coaching JV boys, varsity girls, and varsity boys, uh, and almost won a state championship with the girls and boys in the same year. Hmm. Yeah, he, he is one of those guys that uh, he, he might be on the Mount Rushmore. That that would be a discussion for a day, the Mount Rushmore of South Carolina basketball coaches, high school basketball coaches that uh, he very, very well may find himself on that. Coach, I, I'm curious about uh, you and basketball, your relationship with basketball. What was it about basketball? Did you play in high school? Did you did, and, and what led to being a student manager and then just wanting to watch those thousands of hours to want to be able to be coaching? What, what's your relationship with basketball? Yeah, so I, I did play in high school. Um, I was at Clover High School and, and then I transferred to York High School. Um, I was not extremely good by any stretch of the imagination. Um, just your average uh, run the mill player, but I enjoyed the game. I think I really got excited about it because, you know, during that time at York, uh, Ivory Latta was playing uh, for us at that time. So I got to see just the, the excitement that bit was built around her, which obviously isn't for every single player, but I think just that overall experience had just increased my love for basketball and just kind of set me down a, a path, um, you know, that I took to now. Ivory Latta is still the only player I've ever seen be double teamed without the ball and then triple teamed with the ball in the state <laughs> championship game by Dreer High School. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. How many did she score that game? Like 63? No, she wound <laughs> up with four, she wound up with 44, but she only had 20 going into the fourth quarter, and she scored 24 in the fourth quarter and almost brought her team back to to beat Dreer, who had three Division One players on it at the time. <laughs> it was the most amazing thing I'd ever seen. <laughs> it was mind numbing. <laughs> so watch somebody without the ball have two people running around chasing her as she doesn't have the ball. Like it was, <laughs> I don't even know what to say. It was so, but yeah, I'm sure it was an amazing experience being there. Uh, coach, we've had other athletic directors on who were former coaches. And uh, it's always a good question to ask. What would you like coaches to know about athletic directors? What would you like athletic directors to know about coaches? And, you know, talk about, you know, how, different those jobs are and, and what each needs to know about each other's role. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I mean, I have a unique uh, perspective due to the fact when I started out, um, when I took over Coach Smith, I was also the athletic director at the same time. Um, so I got to see it from that standpoint, you know, working with coaches um, into just into the role now where I'm just the athletic director. Uh, you know, we're here to, as athletic director, I'm here to support you guys. That's what we're here for. I'm trying to give you everything, all the tools that you need to be successful uh, for our student athletes. I mean, again, every decision we do as a coach or athletic director is based on uh, what's best for our student athletes. And, you know, if we're doing that, we're doing the right thing. Um, you know, again, we're just looking for guys that are committed to the school, to the program, to the kids. And, if we're focused on those, those, those three things, uh, you know, we're, we're going to have a great relationship. Well, it kind of leads into a, a leading question for you here, coach Duncan, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, tell us about Northwestern high school, uh, the, the climate of basketball, and then also about maybe that you may have a, a job open here. Uh, so tell us about that and, um, it just you know, a little bit more about what you have going on up there. Yeah. So, you know, kind of unfortunate circumstance for us, Coach Bramlett, John Bramlett, our varsity boys coach, has decided to step down and spend more time with his family. Um, you know, he's done an incredible job for us uh, at Northwestern, um, you know, brought us into a place where we are extremely competitive year in and year out. 
um, you know, we're definitely sad to see him go. Um, you know, with that being said, we've opened up our search for our next head, head coach. Uh, we're taking resumes currently and applications for the end of the month. Uh, you know, we're going to do our interviews the second week in March because, you know, again, we're trying to let coaches focus in on their seasons and finishing up, uh, you know, playoffs. But um, so far, we've gotten a lot of interest. Um, you know, being partial, I think this is one of the best jobs in the state. Uh, you know, our pay is very competitive. Uh, the team is competitive. One region last year tied for second this year in the hardest region in the state. Uh, we have a an amazing um, group of young men that are returning, uh, and and then athletes. You know, Northwestern has a ton of athletes. Uh, you know, I've been to a few schools and a few areas and seen a lot. Um, you know, the amount of athletes that we have is um, up there with the best. The uh, administration is extremely supportive. You know, Mr. Master, our principal, um, is, is there for our coaches and student athletes. You know, he's an incredible man to work for and with. And, you know, and as an athletic director, you know, I, I'm a basketball guy. Um, you know, I want to see us win. I, you know, I'm going to be there for you. So, you know, with that being said, you know, if you guys have any recommendations, don't hold them back for me. Coach, can I commute from uh, Rock Hill to New Jersey? <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I, th I think we'll probably just jump on the interstate and shoot right down there, Chris. We'll have you. We'd love to have you. Uh, Coach, well, as you know, the name of the podcast is The Greatest Games, and uh, you sent us in the notes uh, a whiz banger here. This is going to be a fun one to talk about. If you could take our listeners into the gym, make them feel this atmosphere from the beginning all the way through the next day, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, I'll try, Chris. That, that's a lot there, but I'll try. So, um, you know, I picked the game versus, uh, you know, Great Falls versus Louisville. And I was the head coach at Great Falls for a few years there. And, you know, that, that's one of the best rivalries in the state. Uh, we both had great teams that, uh, you know, very, very good teams that year. We opened up our sales for our tickets. We pre-sold tickets. And now I know, again, in COVID time, you know, everyone's pre-selling tickets. But at this time, you know, that wasn't a thing. We just you just line up at the door and come on in. But we pre-sold tickets. We sold them out in, in like three hours. Um, gym was slam full, standing room only. We probably had 400 people standing in line outside waiting for one person to leave after like the girls game. So like we were one was going out, one was coming in. Um, the girls game ended with, a, like a, you know, I guess a little fight, a fight happened with the girls game bench kind of cleared. So that once that game was over, we got to come out. Um, you know, Mike McCray was the coach of Louisville. So we started off going back and forth. Uh, it, it was incredible game, incredible atmosphere. We got a, this is going in maybe about three minutes left in the first half. We uh, got a still, took it down, shot a three, made it, came back down, got another still through a lob to Kelton Talford. Got a dunk, timeout, Louisville. During that timeout, we're talking to the guys, and we just hear this commotion. And normally, you can't hear anything. You know, you're just right there in your huddle. Um, but, you know, we looked up, and there's this brawl happening in the stands. Um, you know, maybe five, five to seven different individual fights going on. Um, so, of course, we get our players back in the locker rooms waiting to go, trying to, um, you know, figure out what's going on, what can we do. The, so we decide, hey, let's get the fans out and play, finish our game out. The fans won't leave, Chris. Brian, they, they won't leave. They won't get out. They're just standing there. I mean, we got seven or eight um, sheriff's officers there trying to tell them to leave. they won't leave. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen. So we wait about an hour and a half sitting in the locker room. Um, and then we decide, you know, me and Mike McCray decide, hey, we're going to play this tomorrow. There's just no way these people won't leave. They're, they're saying they won't leave until they see Louisville get on the bus. So Louisville gets on the bus <laughs> and they leave. Um, you know, for those fans that are like, you know, those guys asking, hey, wh why not just go to your auxiliary gym? Um, if you haven't been to Great Falls, our auxiliary gym is, um, you know, it's not up to par to play a varsity game. We just <laughs> say that, say it that way. Um, so. At this point, you know, work is crazy. We don't know what to do. We don't know about how they're going to let fans back in, who to get here, how to get them, and how to keep, you know, the fight down. So what we decided to do is have no fans. 
uh, the principals, the ADs, and then the head coaches got together. We decided no fans. We're going to play the next morning. So that's what we ended up doing. We pick up the game with two minutes and like 30 seconds to go. Great Falls leading 25-23 and uh, two minutes to go in the second, uh, I mean, in the second quarter. Now, um, again, you know, I mean, I'm talking to you, you know, and uh, 2000, you know, you know, 2021 here, right? We're in, we're in pandemic COVID time. So uh, people are used to having games with no fans or limited fans. But at, at this point, this is one of the biggest rivalry games in the state, and it's sold out, and we're having no fans. Um, I can't even tell you how weird it was coming into that gym. Um, you know, we I laughed because we definitely dressed for the occasion. Mike McCray and I came in suits the first night on Friday night. We came back Saturday, both we're both both in like pajamas. Look like we're about to go do PE class or something. We're both in sweaters and uh like hoodies and, and you know, and some Nikes, man. Uh, very relaxed on that Saturday. But um you know, the, the intensity of the game didn't change, even without the fans. I think that's what was special for me. Uh, again, we're going back and forth. Uh, it, it's uh, about a one-point game with a minute left to go. Uh, <clears throat> we had, for some reason, you know, they doubled down on our big guy, Kelton Talford. Again, you know, he, uh, he's at Winthrop currently playing. Um, this, this year, he's a freshman at this time. Uh, since Jill Wearmore drills a three, uh, we get a steal on the inbounds. I did it. George gets still on the inbound, lays it in. They try to throw one long, turns it over, we get it back. So, and then it's free throws after that. Um, you know, and we win at, at a decent, you know, decent margin there, but it's a lot closer than, you know, what the final looks like. But, you know, again, there's, there's no one in there except for uh, the news and the reporter, uh, the principals, and then the referees. Um, it, was, it was definitely, definitely a uh, unique experience for us. Well, coach, I'm I don't know. I'm I'm gonna go all QAnon on you and go conspiracy theory here. I'm reading a quote from the game, a quote from Jimmy Duncan, Great Falls athletic director and boys basketball coach. I was told that the film got cut off short about yeah. players leaving the bench during a fight. I don't know. I, I don't know, Brian. <laughs> yeah, so that 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 is a true statement from me. That is from the girls. Uh, did you the cut the film? <laughs> did you- I, did, I did not. I did not. I did not. So we, um, you know, they ended up ejecting quite a few girls um, that the high school did. I think uh, maybe there was like five or six from Louisville and three or three or four from our team. Um, you know, it, it was ugly. You you hate to see anything like that happen. Um, you know, you, you never want to see that. <laughs> no, I'm sure it was a crazy, crazy night all around. But Brian, it was a crazy game. We'll talk more about it. But those fans of the Greatest Games podcast know this is not the first greatest game we've been told about that got delayed until the next day. Can you name the other game or the other coach that told us about the game? Wow, the game that got delayed – until the next day, I'm scrolling through our episode list. Man, I'm blanking. Chris de Blasio and Jimmy, I know you're a fan of the show, I'm sure, but uh, I always miss, I think I'm one for my last 50 uh, trivia questions. So please hit <laughs> but me. This with- is about the show that you host. Oh, I know. No, listen, I'm very aware of that. <laughs> very aware of that. Episode number 23, Coach John Santulli. When he was an assistant at Teaneck High School, the kid broke the backboard in a state playoff game. That's right. And they high school gyms don't have backup, Jimmy, like you said, they don't, there's not a backup rim to roll in the gym like in an NBA arena. So they had to play the next day at a different school. The game was at a neutral site, and the team that broke the backboard then had to go play at the other team's school the next day in a state playoff game. <laughs> Incredible. Incredible. <laughs> So we, now this is our second game that has been delayed, but this one for uh, hooligan-like behavior, if you will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it was, you know, it was just kids in the stands. I guess I should have pointed that out. It wasn't wasn't any of our boys' players, uh, you know, that they were playing with a lot of energy and enthusiasm, but they were under control on both teams. Um, you know, that was that was issues in the in the stands. Um, I still remember Brian and a couple of those guys coming to ask him, you know, like, you know, we, we want a refund, you know, we, we didn't get to see it. And, but you know, that as athletic director, you mean, you know, you never want to hear that, but you know, you have to answer those questions. 
I just remember telling all of them that, you know, they were lucky I didn't charge them $5 on their way out because they got to see, you know, uh, two games and in, in, uh, in a fight. I said, you know, that'd be like $15, $20 anywhere else. I was just giving them a hard time. But, yeah. um, you know, they, they, under, they did understand, though, obviously. I was going to ask you that because that was one of the first things I was thinking about when I was, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, refunds, what do you do? Um, but, and it's, and it's funny, you talk about one fight, there's a, a quote in the same article that, that Blas and I are looking at from Mike McRae of, of Louisville. He said, I, I counted about seven fights. So they, they could have paid you, you know, $35 extra, you know, uh, <laughs> that's, uh, right. uh, that's, uh, that's uh, but yeah, I mean, and, and we've got some, I'm looking at some video too. This is, it, it really is a, a stark contrast between, the pandemic basketball now and what we're looking at here, I'll figure out a way we can put some of these, some of these pictures in the show notes, but it's packed. This is a, a South Carolina high school gym that is just absolutely packed. And then when you talk about this pandemonium erupting and then moving into a game where you're quoted as saying essential personnel. And I'm like, he's foretelling the future. That's what we do now. It's essential personnel <laughs> and, you know, coming into schools and work. And so it's just, it's really fascinating to see that, um, that that kind of transfer right. very ironic brian, brian i mean, if, if i got it man i'll just tell you i mean we just the excitement level around that, that year and and those kids and, and that game um we actually had to play them in the playoffs in the state playoffs uh in the second or third round uh that year and of course the you know the high school league was like absolutely you cannot play this at either one of your home sites <laughs> um without a doubt they're like there's no way we're letting you do that Mm -hmm. um so we got south point you know in rock hill i called their ad at the time he was like yeah you know you come over and i, and I was like well how many is it hold and he's like ah you know like maybe like 2400 2500 and he was like so you have plenty i was like i don't know i said like, he said well i'm not gonna pull out the upper bleachers i was like no we're gonna need those he's like no you won't no you won't i was like yes we will um i think that night we sold like 2400 tickets what? um to a 1a game basketball game we packed south point's gym out um that which was also an incredible game but you know, we ended up losing that one in um, overtime, um, but it was it was incredible atmosphere. Um, you know, all all the way around. I I laugh because uh, after the game, he's like, "Well, you're right." He's like, I, "You know what?" He's like, "We made so much money in concessions." He's like, "I'm not going to charge y'all for the gym for gym <laughs> space." So he didn't charge us for gym space or security. So uh, you know, I really appreciate that guy. I, you know, <laughs> well, I'm assuming you're talking about the great Mike Drummond. Uh, I'm assuming. No, no, we were at South Point High School. Mike, Mike was not. That was after him. Mike had just left. Um, um, they, they had a, and I apologize, I forgot the, forgot his name, but he was there for I believe just a year or just under a year. Oh yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah, Brian, I think his his name was Brian, I believe too. But um, yeah, Mike Drummond, all time great. He's, He's a, a, yeah, athletic director, a, a college official, knows the game of basketball. Great, great guy. So yeah, but. And big time atmosphere there too. You put twenty four hundred people in South Point's gym now. That's a, that's a that's a that's a big time atmosphere there. Brian, I'm and Jimmy, I'm watching this video. Brian, it was posted in the article. I didn't know that, man. This is wild. I I don't mean to make light of it, but there's just like a normal run of the mill jump ball. The two girls kind of fall down and wrestle a jump ball, and then it just erupts into a fight. Like they just start punching <laughs> each other. Like it's, it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and then they go to the stands, and people are tumbling down the stands. The sheriff's officers are running over there. Oh my oh. God, this was. I, so, I mean, um, you know, usually at that point, my, you know, like my principal had taken, you know, cause I'm obviously the basketball coach at the same time. So normally I'm the game manager um, until the fourth quarter. And right. then I, and I'm going to get my team ready and my coach is ready and my principal takes over at that time. And I remember, you know, him, it's like, I need you in here. So I come in there and this is after the fact I'm trying to, you know, sort through all this, but I still remember that one of those, some girl, I won't, you know, obviously no names or anything was like talking about wanting to go back. I was like, why would you want to go back out there? Look, you, look, look what happened. You know, you just, we just need to send you on home and relax, <laughs> calm down. Um, but it was, it was nuts for sure. So, I mean, obviously, you know, listeners can pull that up. Um, you know, I think there's some, also some clips in there from, from the boys game. And then, you know, where it starts off, there's a, you know, standing room only, and then it goes to uh, no one. Yeah, we will put that in the show notes, I believe, Brian, right? We'll put the article in the in the video link yeah. in the show notes. Do that, yeah. That's that is awesome. man, that looks like a wild, a wild night for sure. Definitely. Like I said, it might not be the greatest game, but the the the, the surrounding circumstances certainly make it a memorable night for everyone that was there, I'm sure. 
Absolutely. But and Jimmy too, I'm gonna go back to that that second well, not the second game, the 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 next day part of the game. Mm -hmm. Uh getting the kids. You said it was still a highly contested game. Uh how did you or did you have to get your kids ready to play for that 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 game with no fans? Yeah, that's that's a great question, Brett. Yeah, so I mean I was pretty upset that we weren't finishing the game that night. I thought we were going on a little run finally. We weren't in a very good groove. Um, you know, we were missing shots and then things started happening. We we started putting a few points on our board, a little run, and then that happened. Um, I was very nervous coming in that next day that we would be flat, especially after all the energy. You know, you, you're getting ready for a robbery game, the gym's packed, and then nothing. Stop. Um, didn't really have to get the guys – two up and ready um to be honest with you i mean we were playing uh four freshmen so you know to be honest with you they don't they didn't know any better i mean you know they're just out there ready to play um you know and again when you're talking about playing lewis feel like you know you, you come from the great falls um it's more of you just need to calm them down than you are trying to hype them back up so it was definitely a unique experience for all involved yeah that's uh it's, it's wild. I haven't uh, encountered anything yet in, uh, like that in my days, but I tell you what, I, I start thinking about, like I said, the, the refund thing from an AD perspective and also the, the film and the calls with the high school league and then talk about, well, I don't think it, it looked like it was number 12. No, no, no. That was number 13. No, it's number 12. And it's going back and forth on the film with them mm -hmm. and they're doing the best they can to, uh, to try to uh, protect high school sports, protect the game. But anyway, had to jump in there before, uh, Chris goes with our, our, our final question here, Chris de Blasio. All right. Yeah. Coach Duncan. So you're out of your coaching days now, but when you're in your coaching days, if I talk to kids that played for you, uh, there are great falls. What would be the one phrase or saying they would say coach Duncan says over and over again? Um, probably 17s. Yeah. They probably say 17s. So, uh, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably what they, they, they heard that quite a bit. Um, you know, which is obviously, you know, our, one of our versions of, of, of a little extracurricular uh, running. <laughs> so how fast did they have to make the 17s? And did everybody have to make the time or was it difference for, for the guards and the post players? Let's take a deep dive on the 17s here. Yeah, so we, we, we go sideline to sideline. Uh, you know, each one's one. So, you know, cross is one, back is two. Um, you know, depending on how we were feeling that day, um, you know, we usually started at, you know, 65 seconds, which is pretty, pretty fast. And that's for everyone. And if uh, you didn't make, if one person didn't make it, we would add five seconds. I'd usually talk in between, uh, let them catch your breath and, and go again. And you know how, you know how coaches do. I mean, you know, if your big boy on the end is running as fast as he can and he's, you know, depending on how practice is going, you might, might just count a little slower, um, you know, or if you're trying to drive home a point, you know, you put it on the scoreboard. Sometimes I'll do the, you know, six guys. If there's 12 guys running, six of them have to get it. I don't care which six, but six of you better run your butt off and get the time. And you'll save everybody else from having to run again. But It's funny you mentioned the scoreboard. Because I almost – sometimes I was just ready to go home, but I had the score clock out there. And I'm like, man, I can't – there's no way that I can kind of fudge this now. They can see the clock, you know, but you're right about <laughs> if, if we didn't have the clock out there, it's five – Four. <laughs> three two oh you made it all right you yeah. made a good Break job boys yeah. break it down let's go <laughs> we have all been there that is for sure right well jimmy duncan we appreciate you doing this man taking the time to, to join us and give us a little perspective of an ad former basketball coach that's, that's looking for a, a basketball coach and you're right that is a great job up there and you talk about just uh the hellacious region that's that, that we're all in um really really good basketball right now in, in region four five a and so wish you nothing but the best looking for a coach and again thank you for coming on the show it's been a lot of fun brian chris thank you guys so much for having me i really appreciate it all right we'll go ahead and wrap this one up for my co-host chris de blasio i am brian rosefield and thank you for listening to this episode of the greatest game <laughs>